Meal prep does not have to be a chore, my friends, especially when the benefits outweigh all of the work that goes into it. Hello, my name is Adrena. I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena. And in these videos, you typically see me talking about budgeting and accounting and QuickBooks, but one of my specialties is planning. And in this four part meal prep and meal plan series, I'm giving you all of my tips and tricks for meal prepping, meal planning on a budget. And I'm sharing all of my money saving tips with you. I'm sharing all of my meal planning, meal prepping tips with you. And in this particular video, you're going to watch me meal prep today. So come along with me today and uh, let's meal prep together. I just wanted to quickly share kind of my experience with meal prepping because um, in the past I've had different kind of variables in my life. For example, I used to work full time and go to grad school full time as well. And so I was really, really, really busy for a long period of time, probably right after high school through maybe two years ago. So I had to become really, really good at grocery shopping, meal planning, and meal prepping because that's really what saved me all of the time during the week. In the past, now I'm talking pre-pandemic times, I actually really did enjoy meal, meal prepping on Sunday nights because I felt like that really set me up for the week. But uh, during this pandemic, I just sort of feel like uh, Sunday, if I start a little bit earlier on Sundays, I feel a lot better about it because then I can rest the rest of the day on that particular Sunday. So it's almost about noon on this particular Sunday. I have my comfy clothes on, uh, my hair is up because Lord knows we don't want this hair to get in the food and I've got lots and lots and lots of tips for you guys today. But first, I wanna make sure that we create a plan for today. Here are the first few tips that I want to make sure I get to you right away um, before we start with our meal prepping. <laughs> okay, tip number one, make sure you create a plan. If we did not create a plan and we just went into the kitchen and just went at it, we could actually be there for a very long time and that's not what we want. We want to like cut down on um, our, the amount of time that we're spending in the kitchen. So it's always good to set aside a few minutes. It's probably gonna take me less than five minutes to create my um, meal prep plan for today. Meal prep tip number two. <laughs> Uh, say that 10 times fast. Uh, make sure you wear comfy clothes and you have your hair up. Uh, I would say make sure you wear comfy shoes too in case you have kind of like hardwood floors like I do. Uh, standing on those for a couple hours is not really the funnest. So make sure that you have comfy shoes that you can wear. Make sure you also have some beverage and some form of entertainment. So generally speaking, I either listen to a podcast, I either watch some YouTube videos, but today I'm thinking I'm going to watch, watch some movies on Netflix or maybe a series or something like that on Netflix. So I'm going to take my computer there and have Netflix on in the background to keep uh, me entertained while I meal prep. In the past, I've had really small kitchens, so I had to be really intentional with the um, space that I have. So in this particular kitchen, I don't have a lot of counter space, so I do use my dining table. Um, and so when I am working on my plan right now, I'm also gonna take that into consideration because I really only have one station where I can like chop all the veggies and prep those types of things. If you have a small kitchen and if you're really new at meal prep, I would actually suggest you start with one, maybe two recipes um, a week and then you can work your way up to maybe two to three. So that way you get used to the fact that you've got to make use of the amount of counter space that you have very intentionally. Now here's another meal prep tip. The goal is actually progress, not perfection. So we are gonna make mistakes and we have to allow ourselves that grace in order to make those mistakes and not get too hard on ourselves. Food is very forgiving and you can always uh, add things to it, add spices to it, uh, to make sure that you are um, intrigued by the meals and that you will actually eat those meal preps that you've created. If something doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's just one meal out of many. So always remember there's another meal to come and it's okay to make a mistake. All right, what do we do with other people that we live with? For example, if you had a roommate, what do you do about that? If you had um, a husband or a spouse or a partner, 
Uh, what do you do with that? If you have kids, what do you do with that? So here's my suggestion. If you do have a roommate um, and you guys are working on two different schedules and two different kind of um, grocery lists and things like that, I would schedule the time work it out with your roommate. And so when I had a roommate in the past, I would make sure to let them know that on Sundays, I'm gonna be meal prepping for the week. Now, in the past, I've had some really great roommates and some not so great roommates, but most of the time, the roommates that I've had were very like, absolutely take the kitchen, it's yours. So um, I think as you work to build up your meal prep plan, then you'll be able to kind of uh, figure out what works best for you and your roommate. As far as a husband or a partner or a spouse is concerned, make sure that you let them know that you're going to be working on this meal prep, get them on board, maybe even solicit some of their help, and that way you won't be doing the heavy burden of everything. If you do have kids, I would say like just start with one hour at a time and go from there because maybe your um, partner or spouse can help you with the kids maybe just watching them for an hour at a time or maybe your parents can or a friend that way you have a dedicated amount of time and dedicated space so that you can get your meal preps done trust me it's gonna make your life easier during the week and you will be forever grateful that you created that plan so you could just have an easier week during the week and for right now for this very moment my last meal prep tip is make sure you start with a clean kitchen. So that's actually the reason why I'm in my office right now because I have the dishwasher running and it would be too loud to record these videos. So I have the dishwasher running. I did do one bulk recipe this morning for mini German pancakes and I'll show you that. They came out really good, although next time I'd probably add some sugar to the batter because it was just a little too bland for my taste. But it's not like I'm not gonna eat it. I'm definitely gonna put some syrup on that and enjoy it during the week. Okay, so starting with the clean kitchen, I'm gonna create my plan and let's go. Okay, so I've got my weekly meal schedule here with me and I'm looking at these uh, recipes that I pulled out and realized that I didn't defrost anything. So I will need to start defrosting some chicken and then some of the chicken broth if I don't have enough for the tomato basil soup, but I feel like I can start working on a few other things while I'm defrosting things, but I do need to start with cleaning the kitchen from the um, mini German pancakes. So I think I'll have enough time in between when I take things out of the freezer to when I need to start cooking. I wrote down that I would start with the Jello, um, so we have a dessert for this week and then I can move on to the bagel bites and then I'll prep some of the drinks like iced tea and lemonade and make some Arnold Palmers and move on to the tomato basil soup and then the Tuscan chicken. I do have a few other recipes that are on my weekly meal schedule that I might get to depending on how much energy I have. And because I'm recording these videos, this might take me a little bit longer, so I'm kind of planning out about three hours. I'm gonna need to break for lunch, so I've got all of that going on in my head, but for my lunch, I might just do something quick like an apple and an orange or something like that, that to hold me over until um, dinner when we have the Tuscan chicken pasta skillet so I'm looking forward to that all right I think we're just gonna hop into the kitchen and I'll show you what I do I'm gonna go ahead and put my apron on I realize that it helps me stay somewhat clean as I meal prep and for right now I'm just gonna try and get as much stuff done as I can I do love me some eggs and avocado for breakfast so that's what you see here I've got the recipes and my meal prep plan nearby so I can easily reference them I do need to clean, clear the counters from breakfast and wash the pans. I'm gonna make some hot water in the electric kettle for the iced tea and jello. Leftover coffee gets saved in the fridge. And since I already ran the dishwasher after breakfast, I decided to wash all the other dishes in the sink to start with a clean slate. I do like to carve out this time to start with a clean kitchen because I find that it can be a bit more overwhelming when I don't do this. Something about looking at a cluttered sink doesn't really jive with me. Um, I'm gonna be transferring the cool down pancakes to the fridge and then after this, I'll go ahead and cut up an apple and an orange to have while I'm working away in the kitchen. And then I'll get started with the meal prep.
Okay, so here we are. I have my snack to tide me over. I'm happy to share if uh, my boyfriend gets here. And then the dishes are done, thankfully. I did pull some chicken out of the freezer and I put that in a bowl of cold water to defrost. And then I'm just waiting for this to defrost a little bit and then I'll run it under some cold water. There's my tea that is brewing. I'm gonna let it chill down a little bit more before I uh, pull those tea bags out. So my next step now is to just uh, look at the recipes and then get started. I'm gonna grab all the things out for, I'm actually gonna do the bagel bites first. Um, so I'll show you how I do that. The stuffed bagel balls look like. I keep calling them bagel bites, but they're actually stuffed bagel balls. Next, I just did a um, just one egg and I scrambled that. And I'm gonna do an egg wash over this. I'll show you what that looks like right now. So I just try to get the whole um, bagel covered. This does a couple of things. It actually makes it golden brown, so when it comes out of the oven, it'll be nice and golden brown. But then, for the trick, hold on. And then for the best part is everything but the bagel seasoning blend from Trader Joe's. So sprinkle a little bit. Okay, that's a lot, but it's gonna be really good. These go into the oven at 375 for 25 minutes, and then they should be delicious um, when they come out, but you don't wanna eat them right away. You wanna wait maybe 10 minutes or so. All right, I'm gonna move on to making some jello, so I'm gonna clear this counter and then wash that. <laughs> okay, I just decided to check in with you. It is about 2.30 right now. I ended up taking a break to rest and kind of regroup, and then I reset the kitchen. I took the bagel bites, bagel balls, out of the oven and I wanted to show you how delicious these look. This is what the bagel ball looks like on the inside. And as you can see, it is delicious. There's the cream cheese. That's what the bottom looks like. And then that's also what the top looks like. So these came out delicious. And I may or may not have had some already. Okay, so next up, I am gonna start working on those two recipes. The chicken is almost defrosted. And I am thawing out the broth right now. We need only a cup of broth. But what I'm gonna do now is just take a look at the recipes and then pull out anything that I need um, from the pantry. It looks like I need to chop up some onions and then grab some other items from the pantry, but pretty much just like chop up onions, chop up some basil, and then get started. Okay, so what I was trying to show you is I did not cry cutting all those onions, which was great. I've heard that if you keep like part of the stem on while you're cutting it, then that reduces the like whatever things get into the air that make you cry. So I have my pot going with the onions, letting that saute for a bit to bring out the flavors and a couple of tips for you as I'm going through this. I'm gonna let this get going and then it's gonna need to simmer, right? So 
when it starts to simmer, that's when I'm going to start working on the next recipe after that. And so um, I've got the chicken there, broth there, um, and then I do have everything else that are part of the ingredients there. So um, just make sure you're prepared for moving on to the next to the next thing. So everything else is cut here, and then there's the broccoli, spinach, basil, and then the onion for the next recipe. Okay, so since I did not have the fire roasted uh, diced tomatoes, I ended up adding some oregano with the tomato paste as I was grilling the onions. A little bit hard to film that piece of it because it all kind of happened so quickly. I also added some oregano, salt, pepper, and the chicken broth as well. So now we're just going to wait for this to come to a boil and then we're going to let it simmer for 20 minutes and then this will just be blended together with the basil and then added back to the pot and then we'll add the cream um, or the milk actually. Um, mix it up and then that's the tomato basil soup. So one of the nice things about meal prep is that you know once you are done with the prepping on the Sunday or whenever you decide to do your meal prep then you'll be done for the week and if you needed to come back and do another um, time of meal prep then you can do like a midweek prep which is something similar to what I do. I'll make like a recipe either on a Wednesday or a Thursday and um, hopefully that'll last for the next couple of days until the next meal prep. Now if this is your first time getting started with meal prep then I would definitely suggest that you start with recipes that you already know or something that's easier um, to accomplish maybe within an hour so that you're not um, feeling kind of like it's a daunting task. So right now what I'm doing is just taking out the chicken from the packaging from the freezer and um, what I'll do is I'll start heating up the skillet that I have here and um, season it with salt and pepper. We'll get the chicken cooking first for the chicken Tuscan um, skillet and then we'll remove the chicken from the pan and then we'll start cooking all the other good things that go along to the chicken Tuscan skillet. Okay, so for the soup I have three minutes left on the timer. The flavor is so good. And I wanted to tell you guys, I did not actually follow the recipe to tea um, because, well, there were just a few things that I didn't have as I've mentioned before, but it's still gonna work out. It's gonna work out if you don't have everything. Now for the chicken, I've cut it and it is ready to go. I'm heating up the skillet and the skillet needs to be nice and hot when you put the chicken in so it starts cooking right away. So um, I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer for that. All right, so I finished cooking the chicken and set that aside there. Let's see if it can get a better look at it. It does not need to be cooked all the way because we're gonna add it back to the pan. I started cooking the pasta in there and then I added a little bit of water to this pan to get all the chicken bits out and then onion, salt, pepper, and then the spices which is sage, oregano, and then I did add some red pepper flakes because I don't have any of that fire roasted diced tomatoes. So we're gonna let this cook for a little bit and then we're gonna start adding the veggies to that and over here I have the tomato basil soup put into the blender and since it's still really hot just blending it a little bit at a time making sure there's a vent then we're gonna add some milk to that and then that will be done and ready to go so moving right along okay so for this particular recipe it's the Tuscan chicken pasta skillet I did um, sub the mushrooms with broccoli so I had that frozen bag of broccoli that I showed you guys in my grocery haul. I threw that in along with the spinach and then the drained uh, diced tomatoes and so I'm gonna let this cook down a little bit before I add the chicken back to this but um, allowing the onion and the seasonings to cook first actually brings out the flavor and let me tell you this smells amazing so so good this is gonna be really good so I'm gonna let this cook down and then I wanted to show you um, the soup I've taste tested it multiple times now it is delicious <laughs> 
Um, and the thing about it is if you're using a blender, just you gotta go in batches and do it rather slowly so the steam can escape. Um, and then after it's blended, then you add in the milk or the cream or whatever you're gonna use. Uh, this is gonna be really good with a grilled cheese. So, so, so delicious. Once it's cooled down completely, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to some mason jars or some Tupperware containers and um, put it in the fridge. You don't really wanna put this in super piping hot in the fridge right away it's um it's gonna ruin the flavor so you just let that sit for a minute it's still really really hot to touch Well, thank you so much for meal prepping with me. I'm gonna leave you here. All I need to do really for this skillet is to add some Parmesan cheese and eat it. And I am definitely ready to eat it after all of this talking about food with you. I hope this video and the, seri the four part series was super helpful for you. Like I've said before, take what you can use and leave what you don't need. And I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you liked about these four part series and if you have any suggestions as far as meal prep is concerned go ahead and leave a comment below as well so everyone else who's watching these videos can uh, glean from your knowledge as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.